When the purple waters came again, the fourth piece of God's purple puzzle tree. That's right. The one was Kingpin Cain, and the other was Nobody Abel. Cain worked very hard to make his wheat and barley grow. Abel watched the goats and sheep no matter where they'd go. At harvest time, both Cain and Abel came to worship God. Cain brought sacks of grain, and Abel brought some sheep, the sweetest he could find. When God saw both these gifts, he knew how Cain and Abel felt about their God. So God said, Cain, your gift is gross. You have a selfish heart. Abel, your gift is good. I love you, Abel, you nobody. And that makes you somebody. Well, Cain was very angry. He asked his brother Abel to meet him in the fields. There, Cain killed his brother Abel when he thought no one was looking. Now, yelled Cain, you are nobody, for you're absolutely dead. Then the blood of Abel that was spilled on the ground screamed to God for help, and God came running fast. Where's your brother Abel, Cain? said God. I can hear him crying, help. How should I know, God? said Cain. Am I supposed to watch my brother and care for him all day? If I have to babysit that guy, then God, you have to pay. No, you're the one who has to pay, said God, like a very angry father. You won't pay with money, but with fear inside your heart. For everywhere you go, someone else will want to kill you because you killed your brother Abel. That's more than I can stand, said Cain, with tears inside his heart. I need some help from you. So God, who loves all men, gave Cain another chance. He placed a bright red mark on Cain to show all other men. They had no right to kill Cain, for God had forgiven him. But the days of Cain were evil days, and so were the years that followed. Those were the days when big black dinosaurs with fierce roars and screeching snores would stomp and clomp and romp through the purple swamp. Those were the days when ferocious, hairy giants with enormous gleaming eyes wandered through the night like ghosts. So when God saw that everyone was wicked and all the world was evil, he said to himself, that's it. I'll bring the world to an end, I'll tear it up completely, and I'll start all over again. What do you think will happen if God tears the world in two? Do you think he'll save some pieces to start the world anew? Then there came a rumbling, a rumble, rumble, rumbling, like the sound of a giant mumbling and grumbling trying to open a door underneath the ground. And suddenly... The earth was split wide open, and the land was covered with water and mud galore. Then there came a thundering, thun-dun-dun-dun-dundering, like the sound of a giant blundering trying to open a door in the ceiling up above. And suddenly the heavens split open wide, and from the sky above more water began to pour. The world had split in two, and the world filled up with water, very dirty water. 
that looked like a dirty purple. The water kept on churning and churning round and round and up and down and in and out and everywhere there was. And it made an ugly sound like... So God punished all the world and everything he made for all the men were evil and very, very bad. But a very strange thing happened in the middle of all this mess. God saved some special pieces from the old world he had made. He snatched them from the purple waters, just as we are saved the day we are baptized with water and with love. The first piece was Noah. An old, old man called Noah, and all his family too. God told old man Noah to build a boat and make a floating zoo. So he took some ants and he took some snails, some clumsy kangaroos who have very funny tails. He took some fish and took some crows and some camels with a hump and a happy hippopotamus who has a very dirty feet that make a funny sound like and he took a few of all the things that came up two by two to be the very first to live in that great floating zoo. For months and months and months and months the world was full of water, dirty purple water. Then one day, one New Year's Day, the land appeared again like a big dry hump, a bumpy, lumpy, humpy hump that came between the waters and stopped the dirty water from churning round and up and down and in and out and everywhere there was. By the end of one long year, the world was made anew, so Noah and his animals left their floating zoo. And I'm sure they never will, aren't you? Boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed this wonderful story retold and written by Norman C. Habel. And I want you to be encouraged to go check out the true story of Noah written in the Bible in Genesis chapter 6 through chapter 9.